this is going to be my first time going up in a lighthouse. What about you? I've never been. I've never climbed inside one. I learned yesterday about the day marks, and this one's significantly different. Yeah, this is not as tall as Cape Hatteras. But still impressive. Probably not as famous as Cape Hatteras, but you know what? We're definitely going to have a fun time getting up to the top. You ready to get some steps in? Heck yeah. Always. 1871. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> kind of creepy. <Ooh>. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. <gasps> this is cool. Man. <laughs> Look at the detail. We're going all the way up there. We're literally getting our steps in. 214 steps, it's probably like a 10-story building. We better Ready? get going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but look, look. Only one person allowed on the stairs at one time, so. I'll meet you at the next platform. Hello. Hello. <laughs> are you coming up? I like to say 219 steps from brick to balcony. Most of those are on a historic floating staircase. So the stairs haven't been reinforced into the wall. They're just holding on to the wrought iron on the landing. And so because of that, that's uh, some of the rules and regulations that we have as far as kind of one person on a staircase at a time. 176, 177, 178, 179. Oh God. Only two more to go. What the heck? Oh, jeez, oh, look at this view. It's breathtaking. Oh my gosh. Look at that this breeze. Is... <laughs> Construction began in 1871, pretty much right after the current Hatteras Lighthouse was finished up. A lot of that same crew kind of came up here and started construction on this one. It was completed in uh, 1872, first lit on October 1st of that year. The original fuel source was pig lard. A lot of folks think whale oil, but at that point it was kind of getting scarce, a little expensive. The lighthouse keepers were uh, responsible for every drop of fuel, and if they spilt any, it came out of their paycheck. They carried it up in five gallon buckets, originally pig lard, so they'd have to heat it up and burn it. And if you've ever cooked bacon before, all that sputtering and splattering, same thing was taking place here. So a lot of cleaning that needed to be done as well. Oh gosh. To be able to show those sorts of views and share the history of the area, that's why I really enjoy this job. And I couldn't wait to come back and set up for camp night. We've got a special guest coming to tell us some stories about the area. It's gonna be a good night here at the RV. And then now Hatteras. Now we're cooking. Honey, I can't wait. It smells so delicious. So tell us here in the Outer Banks, what you do. You are a custodian of history, certainly. I represent the keeper. Now, anytime a person hears the term keeper, they automatically think of one thing and one thing only, a lighthouse. And that's certainly true. But lighthouses were only half of the story of maritime rescues. When a wreck occurred, there's nothing the lighthouse could do about it. Entered the United States Life Saving Service. These were guys that actually went out and rescued shipwreck victims. It existed on all of our coasts for 44 years. In that time, they saved over 177,000 people coming in one at a time, and somehow America has forgotten this history, it doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I uh, do what I do. The Coast Guard of the Times, basically? In 1915, the Life Saving Service merged with the United States Revenue Cutter Service to form today's U.S. Coast Guard. The phrase, so others may live, that came from the United States Life Saving Service. When I hear this story, these are the true watermen. They've put their life on the line for someone else. And to, to row a boat out into this ocean out here, I'm from Florida, much heavier surf out In here. In December. It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, that's truly incredible. Absolutely. And I love that you are still telling these stories and living these stories for others to learn. What a treat. 
Yeah. This has been, oh my goodness, Keeper James. Thank you for a great evening.